Hi, my name is Anthony. I'm a PhD student at UC Irvine, and I'll be presenting our work MOCA, a dataset for training and evaluating generative reading comprehension metrics. This is joint work with Gabby Stanowski, Samir Singh, and Matt Gardner. I'll start off by motivating our work and talking about reading comprehension. So uh, reading comprehension is this task where we give a model a passage, and we want to probe a model's understanding of it. The way we usually probe understanding is via question answering. And this raises the question, what is the right format of question answering we should be using? Uh, the first format we could be using is span selection. And the pros here are that it's easy to evaluate, but the cons are that we require distractor spans to be good, and answers must be spans, which is a bit restrictive. The second format is multiple choice. It's easy to evaluate, but again, we need distractor choices, and this can introduce unwanted biases. And this also isn't very flexible because the model can't synthesize its own answer. The final format is generation. This is much rarer than the other two formats. Uh, the good thing here is that any question can be asked because the model can generate the answer and there's no need for distractors, but here evaluation is hard. So I'm gonna put forth that generation is the right format. It's flexible and doesn't require distractors, but existing metrics are insufficient to handle the nuances of reading comprehension. I'll show some examples and feel free to pause if I'm going too fast over the examples and you want to read a little bit more. This first example shows that existing metrics are hurt because they are agnostic to the passage. So the question is, why did these two people fight? The reference is over the affection of Abigail and the candidate is for Barbara's daughter's love. Uh, Abigail is Barbara's daughter in the passage. So this candidate is correct, but existing metrics is sign a score of zero. In the second example, we show that existing metrics uh, have an over-reliance on token overlap. So the reference is they are watching the Olympics. The candidate is the Olympics are watching them. And the semantic role is swapped in the candidate, but the tokens are very similar between the reference and the candidate. So a metric like blue assigns a score that's a little bit too high. Finally, existing metrics are oversensitive to length. So the candidate is a much longer way of saying the reference, and the candidate adds some extra details which are correct. But blue, rouge, and meteor think the candidate is too long, and so assign a score that's too low. So, um, I'm going to put forth that evaluation is a bottleneck for progress right now in reading comprehension because we should be moving in this uh, generative reading comprehension direction. And our approach to address this evaluation bottleneck is to train a learned metric to mimic human judgment scores instead of trying to engineer a metric. The pipeline for doing this is to first collect candidate answers, have humans score these answers, and then finally to train a model to mimic these scores. All right, so this leads us into MOCA. Uh, and I will now be talking about it. MOCA is a data set that takes a bunch of question answering instances, pairs them with candidates and their associated human judgment scores on a scale of one to five. Uh, MOCA has candidates from six constituent QA data sets and we collect from so many data sets because we don't want a learned metric to overfit to any uh, instances. To, we don't want our uh, learned metric to overfit to the nuances of any QA data set. Of these six data sets, four are generative. Uh, and of these four, three of them, MC Script, Cosmos QA, and Social IQA, were actually originally multiple choice data sets, which we've repurposed as generative. Two of them, Drop and QoRef, are span selection data sets. And the reason we included them is because we were curious whether a learned metric could do well in evaluating span selection data sets. Uh, the way we generate candidates is in one of two ways. One, is by taking model outputs, or the other one is by back translating the reference. So in total, MOCA contains 40,000 candidates, and we split these 40,000 into training, validation, and testing sets. Uh, once we have these candidates, we then gather human judgment scores using uh, this interface. Uh, each training instance gets one judgment score, and each validation test set instance gets three and are then averaged. All right. So uh, we now present LERC, a learned metric for reading comprehension. And LERC is pretty straightforward. It's just a BERT-based model, which takes as input passage, question, reference, and candidate. And it's trained to do regression and mimic the human judgment scores. Um, the baselines we compare LERC against are existing popular metrics like Blue, Meteor, Rouge, and BERT score. We also compare against a BERT uh, model that's been trained on STSB to do paraphrase detection. Uh, the way we train LERC is in this uh, so-called out-of-dataset fashion. So for a constituent dataset we want to evaluate on, like narrative QA, 
what we do is we train on candidates from every data set except for narrative QA. So we hold out that data set from our training set. And this reflects the real world use case where we want to use Lurk to evaluate a new uh, reading comprehension data set we haven't trained on. Our first set of results is Pearson correlation on the test set. Um, I'll, for, I'll just point out that Meteor does the best out of the n-gram based metrics. The paraphrase detection does slightly better and Lurk does the best while still leaving significant room for improvement. Um, to get a sense of what Lurk could be improved on, what we do is we take 40 instances from the validation set of Mocha with the largest gap between the Lurk score and human scores, and then categorize these instances by their error source. Uh, this is on the right. So um, these errors come from Lurk not recognizing when the reference and candidate have the opposite meaning, when they have the same meaning, um, Lurk not using the passage enough, so not being able to resolve things like co-reference. And then this other category, which is sort of uh, a large catch-all for cases like Lurk not uh, using or not um, understanding semantics enough or not understanding syntax enough. All right, the final set of results I want to present is on evaluating robustness with minimal pairs. So what we do to create these minimal pairs is given a passage, question, and reference, we write down two candidates that have high token overlap with each other, but one of which is much more correct. And these two candidates form a pair. So an example is on the right, where we have this question, who is Frenchman de Vac, the reference of Frenchman, a, French, a fencing master who kidnapped Norman. And these two candidates that replace the name Norman with two other names. Uh, the first candidate actually is a perfect uh, answer because Richard is Norman, while the second candidate is not. So in total, we have 200 minimal pairs. What we do with these minimal pairs is, um, given one of them, we ask the question, can a metric recognize which one of these two candidates is better? Or in other words, does a metric assign a better score to the uh, better candidate? This is sort of like a ranking, uh, a ranking score or a classification score. Um, I also want to point out that minimal pairs were created to test understanding of a variety of phenomenon. So um, we have examples in the paper of each of these. Here are the results of the minimal pairs. Um, Bert, Meteor, and Rouge get very close to the random guessing baseline of 50% because um, they rely on token overlap and both candidates have very high token overlap with each other and with the reference. So it's hard to distinguish which one is better. Bert and STSB do slightly better and Lurk by and far does the best at 80%. All right, uh, some concluding thoughts. So the first takeaway is that given that you have training data for the do domain or task you want to evaluate on, a learned metric is probably preferable to an engineered one. But that's not to say a learned metric is perfect. Uh, Lurk is weak on some phenomenon, as we showed in our error analysis. And we plan to get some more targeted training data to sort of patch up these flaws. Uh, the final takeaway is that we hope that Mocha and Lurk will allow better uh, generative QA data sets to be created, harder ones, which will hopefully in turn allow better generative models and better candidates to be created, which will in turn allow Lurk to be improved. And we hope that uh, Lurk uh, sort of spurs this continual cycle of improvement. We have a landing page at alanlp.org slash mocha. And I, also, I want to point out in particular, we have a leaderboard for um, evaluating evaluation metrics for reading comprehension, as well as a demo where you can interact with Lurk and other uh, existing metrics. Thanks for listening.